it's Reya and welcome to another video. After a week of computer troubles I can finally do my translatathon wrap up and I'm actually really proud of all that I accomplished during this week. I hosted sprints, I participated in sprints, both of which I've actually never done during any readathon. I completed every single Instagram challenge and most of the actual reading challenges. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to be talking about the graphic novels first. I started my week with the third volume of Berserk and I have to say this third volume um, reminded me of why I like Berserk because um, in the first two volumes, Guts is a completely unrelentingly unlikable um, bastard. Uh, but in this third volume, we start to um, figure out what kind of person he is and figure out uh, the, that the black swordsman persona is more like a tough guy exterior that he puts on so that he doesn't show that he is actually really vulnerable inside we get introduced to the main antagonist and we start the golden era uh, arc uh, that deals with all the backstory before Guts became the Black Swordsman and I really liked it. Um, there were some things <laughs> that I didn't really like that much. Uh, for example, homosexuality being uh, portrayed as sexual deviancy, but at the same time this work is being made by a Japanese man and this particular volume was first published in Japan in the 80s. So there's there's a kind of like historical context too and um, Mura, Mura does get better later. But the implications are kind of... Um, but yeah, I like this. I like that the art got a lot crisper in this third volume. Uh, basically, Miura probably got a hold of some assistants and got some more budget for his work because you can really tell that the art uh, quality rises in this volume and I really liked it. I gave it four stars with some caveats, but I'm going to link my Goodreads review down in the description so you can um, see in more detail what I thought about the volume. Moving on to My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness by Nagata Kabi. This is an own voices um, non-fiction graphic memoir of Nagata Kabi's um, experience with depression, coming to terms with her sexual identity and everything that goes with it and also coming to terms with her professional life and how her coping with her depression um, doesn't allow her to do a regular nine-to-five job as her parents would want her to do. And she tries to um, make compromises and she tries to um, please her parents uh, to the detriment of her own well-being. And I found this so friggin' relatable. Like, I'm usually... Like, I don't usually care if I can personally relate to um, to a work of fiction or non-fiction or, or um, etc. I just need to be able to sympathize and empathize uh, with the people involved. And I just found this so relatable. Like this was speaking to me on a personal level uh, in so many ways because of uh, my struggles with my own identity and with queerness. Uh, how my parents reacted to it, also depression and social anxiety. This just ticked all the boxes for me and I gave it five stars. Highly recommend. Moving on to books. First up, uh, Gene Mapper by Taiyo Fuji. Um, this, this book was part of my uh, predictions of um, like five star book predictions and I will say right out of the gate that this did not reach a five-star rating. Um, th this book 
had a lot of interesting ideas, a lot going for it. And I think I probably would have liked it a lot more if I didn't study this field, if I wasn't in computer science, if I wasn't going to be an ICT infrastructure specialist. Um, this book probably would have been better if I was a lay person reading it. But because I am not, um, some of the technical things in this book made me cringe so much. Um, Taiyo Fuji is a um, software developer and sometimes software developers don't really need to take into consideration what goes on in the actual infrastructure of the thing they're building. They're usually designing, they are doing the front end stuff. Uh, and this just... Yeah, some of the uh, things in here were like, nobody thought of the security of these uh, technological advancements. And I, I was like, this, this wouldn't be how it would work. Um, but there were some interesting ideas. I, I liked that it was very fast paced. This was a very quick read. And um, I liked that it had uh, female characters who were tech, uh, technically proficient. That was a plus. And I also like that there was a South Asian representation, which was uh, good. But the technical aspects were like, mm, not, not, so, not so well thought out in my opinion. And I ended up giving Gene Mapper three stars. It was a valiant effort, but not really uh, what I was looking for. The next book I read was this short story uh, collection, which has two short stories, uh, The Khazar Key and Tear Tide. The Khazar Key is by Zhu Yie and Tear Tide is by Wu Fugang. And both of these stories are kind of near future dystopias um, with an emphasis on how social media and big data and da data mining will uh, affect um, humanity in the future. And I thought that the Khazar Key was definitely the stronger story of the two. Um, it had a much more um, interesting way of how it was written. Uh, you didn't know everything going into it. You were kind of um, uh, drip fed information as the story was progressing. You didn't really know if the main character was a good person or a bad person until later. And it had a lot of open-endedness to it. Basically, in the future, there is this thing called Khazar Key, which is used for money, it is used for transport, and it is basically um, a kind of advertising system uh, that collects its users' um, data while they are using it. And some people, because they can't afford uh, to buy the thing, things Kazarki advertises to them in real life, choose to go into perpetual sleep. They are buying sleeping pills and they are spending uh, an eternity in these advertisement worlds that Kazarki offers to them and some of them end up committing suicide. And there's a lot of talk about the ethics of this. And I found it really interesting. It, uh, it was really good, in my opinion. Uh, the next story, Tear Tide, um, has a kind of similar premise um, in that it talks about pervasive advertising. There is a system called the Tear Tide that basically data mines everything that you ever have done. It, it can access your bank records, it can access your relatives uh, information, it can access your personal information, your tax records, everything. And it tracks all the purchases that you ever made so that it can build uh, a profile for you and start targeting your innermost desires, be, there, be they negative or positive. And this causes people to start committing suicide because they get so depressed by the pervasive advertisement of Tear Tide. And uh, the story follows this woman who is trying to sabotage uh, Tear Tide 
by taking advantage of all the users that have passed away and taking their data and trying to use it to combat uh, the tier tight system. And um, I thought that the premise of this story was very promising, but the execution was not um, was not really uh, all that uh, well thought out. I felt that aside from the two main characters, all the other uh, characters that are mentioned are kind of blank slates. Um, you are supposed to empathize with them, but I felt that I didn't know enough about the world and I didn't know enough about these characters to really feel a deep connection. But um, I did still enjoy the story and I gave this collection uh, three and a half stars. Next up I read Tang Fei's collection of science fiction and I loved this collection. Um, it is very ethereal, very dreamlike. All of the stories are of course science fiction and they are kind of creepy and straddle that line between a kind of poetic dreamlike story and pure horror and I really like them. Uh, all these stories, um, bar two, which are translated by Ken Liu, uh, all these stories are translated by different translators and I felt that you could really tell um, that the same kind of ethereal dreamlike quality was present in all of the stories despite them having been translated by different uh, different translators and I thought that that spoke uh, to Tang Fei's credit that her writing is so unique and she has such a, um, such a strong voice in her writing that it comes across no matter who is translating the work and I highly recommend this collection. I will leave a link to my Goodreads review down in the description so you can check out my full thoughts on all of the stories. Uh, but I gave this one uh, four stars. And the last book I read, or rather the first book I read, but the highest rated book that I read during Translatathon was The Color Purple or Häivähdys Purpura as it is in Finnish. And this was translated by Kersti Juva. And I really liked it. I read this in like two days. It was very quick to read. Uh, the whole book is told in letters. And I just wanted to know what would happen to this character because the, the book starts in a really gruesome way. It starts with an act of violence that kind of disorients you, disorients the reader in the same way that it disorients uh, the character. And you kind of uh, are following this character's struggle with that um, happening and that and that um, instance of violence kind of um, kind of informs who this character is going forward and the story is told in a very kind of strong uh, strong dialect there is like uh, the original uh, English language version is told in this uh, very colloquial uh, southern uh, American English and Kersti Juva decided to use a kind of southwestern dialect uh, for the Finnish translation which is not my dialect I'm from um, eastern Finland and, Car uh, and of Karelian uh, descendancy so some of the um, phrases and some of the words used I had to look up because I was like okay um, we don't use this where I come from, so I had to, I had to actually look it up. Uh, but I really liked it. It was so intense, and I just wanted Celie to be happy. I wanted Netty to be happy. I want them to find each other and be together. And um, I'm also quite surprised, um, even though this has a lot of violence against wom women and uh, all practically uh, aside from like two. Uh, all the male characters are despicable people in this book. Like I, I hated every single one of them, almost. Um, but this is a surprisingly sex-positive book. Like, I was actually really surprised how how little in the way of slut-shaming there is in this book. Um, 
like when you when you think about the like uh, end game and end result and how how these people end up um, it is a very hopeful very positive way to end the story and I really enjoyed it and I gave this one four stars and there you have it this has been my wrap up for the translatorphone and translatorphone round two will take place in September from September 2nd to September 9th and I will leave the link to the translator on Twitter down in the description as well and if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will see you in the next video bye bye <laughs>